Moving forward with our C++ programming, I want to introduce you to a concept that is called function. And what is a function? Well, basically, a function is where we group our code that we want to reuse over and over again. And I like to use this example right after I use these calculations to represent or to teach you math in programming. Because for example, if we have a calculation that we are going to perform over and over again, maybe subtract two numbers, we can create a function that is going to do that for us. And first of all, let me just type it out. So here we have void later on in a moment, we will see what is a void and we will see how or what is another type of function that is not a void that we will have. But for now, just type it out void. And for example, we're going to say calculate. So calculate two numbers or simply calculate numbers. Why do I need to say two? So calculate numbers. And what we can do is we can basically take all of this code over here along with this print and we can paste it over here and here instead of calling to print everything i'm simply going to comment this out and by the way this is a comment as you see over here so this is a comment and a comment will not be counted in as your code you use it to basically document your code so here i can say for example printing the result so that you know for what you are going to use this right here or what is below your comment. But generally you are going to code in a way that your code will document itself. And how is that? Well, as I said in the beginning, so we have the remaining held, we have the damage, this code documents itself. When you look at this variable, you know it's a held variable. When you look in this variable, you know it's a damage variable. But that there is no like restriction if, that you don't use comments except that you don't overuse them to document your code. But anyways, as you saw here, so this is a comment here, colon, colon, or slash, slash, however this is called anyways. And now here we can call the function, but, and how do you call a function? You call it with the function name and parentheses. But before that, let me talk about the declaration of a function and how we do that. First of all, we declare if the function will return a value or it will not return a value. What does that mean? It means that in the case of not returning a value here, we can simply calculate the two numbers from within the function and we can print them from within side of that function. And you denote that a function does not return a value by typing void. So you need to type either void or something that the function will return. If I remove this void, you see automatically we have a problem because we need to tell does this function return a value or not. So void will tell us that it does not return a value. Don't worry, in a moment we will see how we can return a value. So void will not return a value, then you give it a name to that function. So what is the name? Well, the name is calculate numbers or it can be any other name. This is up to you. Same as with variables. So you will give meaningful names. In this case, we are going to calculate two numbers. So yeah, this function is going to be called calculate numbers. And then you open close parentheses and open close curly brackets. So this is how you denote a function and what you type in between these curly brackets. And by the way, let me just remove this over here. It's annoying. So yeah, let me just hold enter to give a little bit space that I can move up and down like this. So what you type in between these curly brackets, let me just take my highlight tool. So what you type in between here and here, so all of this over here is the code that will be executed when we call the function. And how do we call the function? Well, when you declare it like this, so you declare the function, you simply then call it with the name and you call it with the parentheses and end that with a semicolon. So this is how you call a function name. Now, in C++, we will have one issue. If I try to run this now and if I build it, yes, you will see that, bam, we have a problem. There were build errors. Would you like to continue run the last successful build? No. And pay attention over here. So build succeeded, zero, one has failed. And if I hover over or if I remove it over here, what is the issue? Well, the issue is if you see this right here. For Unreal Engine, blah, 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 error is at line 25. So the error is at line 25, and this is the type of error. It says calculate numbers identifier not found. 
What does that mean? Well, if I go on line 25, you see this right here is causing the problem. Well, the issue over here is because our main function is over here, we need to move this function above it because it doesn't know the main function, doesn't know the functions below it. So it, does not, it, it will not identify them as functions and it will think that they don't exist. So here when we call calculate numbers, when the function was declared below the main, it thinks that that function does not even exist and throws that error. So we need to declare it above it in order for the main function to know that we actually have a calculate numbers function. So if I go now here and debug the project, so I run it, you will notice here the subtraction of a and b is minus three. Same as what we had so far, but notice this right here is not printed. And if you don't trust me, I'm simply going to remove all of this here, but it will be weird if you don't trust me, why are you running from me? So here, if I go and say yes now to build it again, you will notice the subtraction of a and b is negative three, because again, we are printing from within this function. And again, if when I call the function, so we call it over here, it will go inside of that function name or inside of that function, which is way over here, and it will execute all the code that we have inside of that function. So this is what we are doing for that our functions useful because Imagine that we need to calculate two numbers over and over again. And every single time we call this function, we call it, we call it, we call it, so on and so forth. But notice one thing, what if we want to subtract? So let's call this subtract numbers. So not calculate numbers, but instead I'm going to say subtract. So subtract numbers, but we don't want to subtract seven and 10 every single time. Maybe we have some other numbers. Maybe we have some other calculation. Maybe we, maybe we have a health and a damage value and we want to subtract the damage from the health. So how can we do that? Well, instead of having these variables over here declared, we can declare them here inside of these parentheses as parameters. So I can say here int a and I can say comma int b like this, as you can see now. So what is going on over here. Well, these are called parameters. So what we, let me just move this over here so I can have my highlight tool. What we put in these parentheses inside of a function that is called a parameter. So parameter, so param, I'm going to call it param. So parameter, there is no limit how many parameters you can put. There is no limit to what type of parameters you can put inside. So I put two integers because we're subtracting from two numbers. I can also put a float. So here, instead of an int, I can say a float and this will work as well. I can say a double, I can say whatever it will work as you already see. And now when we call, this is the difference though. So now when we call the function, we call it the same way. So we call the name of the function, but now we have parentheses, we have parameters. So open, close parentheses. And if I end with a semicolon, it will complain. You see too few arguments in a function call. By the way, this is a parameter or an argument as well. So it's a called an argument or a parameter. But what is this? Why is this complaining? And if I try to run, it will also complain. It will not build. You see, no. And what is, you see here, the initializer, blah, blah, blah. Let me just see here from flow to int initial possible loss of data. Well, yeah, we don't worry about that because this is just an example. You see subtract number function does not take zero arguments. What does that mean? That means here when we declared the function, we said that this function will have two parameters or two arguments, but here we are calling it. We are not providing parameters. So what we need to do is we need to provide them. So for example, if I say here 15 for parameter number one, colon or comma, not colon, excuse me. And let's say the next parameter is four and I say this. So now it will work. So you see here, when we declare multiple parameters, you declare a type, you give it a name. And if you want more, you will type comma. So here, if I want more, I would say comma and I would say int C comma int, I don't know, G so on and so forth. This is how you add more parameters. Or if you want to add comma, then bool, uh, I don't know, dead, then comma, string name, blah, blah, blah. So this is how you can add more parameters to the function. Sim simply adding a comma, declaring the name of the parameter, the type, excuse me, the parameter, then giving it a name. So now what is happening 
And let me just take my highlight tool again. These parameters, so A and B, so these two parameters that we have over here, now we can use it with inside of the function, which means inside in between these curly brackets. So only between these curly brackets, for example, we cannot use this float B over here in main because main doesn't know that this B parameter that even exists. It only exists within the scope of the function itself, which means that we can use it. So we can use A and B inside, as you can see, this is inside and we can use it to use subtraction or to calculate, to use subtraction, to calculate subtraction. What is that use subtraction? So yeah, I can say here, for example, A minus B, which are these two parameters, and it will store the value of those right over here in the subtraction, then we can use it to print it out in the console. So if I print this out, so if I go over here and print this out, that will mean that we have a value of 11, but how and why? Well, over here, when we call the function, we passed 15 and four. So 15 will be equivalent now. And let me take my highlight tool again. So now number 15 will take the role of int A and number four will take the role of float B. So the values that you pass over here inside of the function, when you call it to execute those values, and let me just zoom out. So what happens? Okay. Interesting features this highlight tool has. Anyways, so those values, these values will be traded with these, with these parameters. So basically these parameters are just there. Let's say for example, I don't know how, how, what example can I use over here? So for example, let's say I am a teacher and I say, I need two students to do some job for me to go and get me, I don't know, uh, a new billboard, a billboard, a new board where I can, you know, write because I'm a teacher. So yeah, I need two students. Well, A and B are two students. I didn't specify which two students I need. I just said I need two students. And then maybe Carl and Kenny, they're like, okay, teacher, we want to go. So now student A is Carl, student B is Kenny. So this is what we are doing with this over here. Okay, so this is a function that takes up that takes two parameters and doesn't return a value. And previously we saw a function that only that doesn't take no parameters, so zero parameters and doesn't return a value. Let's now take a look at a function that will return a value, but over here I'm simply going to say for example 10 and for example 5. So it's not important, so we will just calculate this. Don't worry about that. We will see that in a moment. So uh yeah. And I'm going to remove this from here because now we're going to return a value and we will see how that goes. So here we have subtraction 10 minus five. We know the outcome will be five, but I'm going to show you one thing. You see here we have int subtraction and here void will denote that this function will not return a value. How can we denote that it will return a value? Well, we can denote that by typing here what type of value we want to return. What is that type? In this case, it's an integer. So here, instead of void, we will type integer and now we can return a value. But returning a value requires us to use a return statement like this and specify what we want to return. So for example, we can return five, which is also an integer. This will work. But here I can also use the subtraction, which is our result, and I can return that back. And what does that mean return? Well, it basically means that and now I can go over here and instead of using this int subtraction is equal to like this over here, I can simply call subtract numbers, you see, like this, and this will work. Why? Well, because this function will return an integer that we specify over here, which means when it calculates, it will return it, which means we can now store it in another integer variable and we can use that value. In this case, that value will be 10 minus five, which is five, which means now this subtraction over here value or variable will have a value of five. Let's test that out. I'm going to uncomment this over here and I'm going to try and build it. So here build, yes, and let's see, will that be true? Of course it will. So subtraction of A and B is now equal to five. Again, why? Well, because here, 10 minus five is five, return subtraction, which is this value, and store it because it's an integer. We can now store it in a value or a variable type of integer because it is an integer. We can also do something like this. We can return this right here. So we can say return 10 minus five. And this is a function that 
returns a value. So it returns, and that value can be an integer, it can be a float, so it can be a float, it can be a double, it can be a boolean, it can be a string, depending on the situation. We will see examples for that, don't worry about it, we will see examples. When we start creating our game, we will see how we can return f vectors and so on and so forth. So this is a return function. Now we also have a function that returns, but also takes parameters. And let's say here we have int a and int b. Same scenario as previously, because we want to specify which numbers we want to subtract. We don't want to subtract 10 and 5 every single time. So here I can say a minus b, and I can return this subtraction. So now when I call the function, it's the exact same thing. So here calling the function, it will return a value that we can catch here inside and store it inside of this subtraction integer. But here I'm simply going to say int instead of float. And here for the numbers, we can now specify same as with what we did a moment ago. So let's say, for example, I want 25 comma and 13. So now we will have here 25 will be, will assume the role of, so 25 will assume the role of A and 13 will assume the role of B, which means now A minus B, it will be 25 minus 13, which is 12, and I'm pretty good at math, so yeah. And if I run the app right now, we will see that subtraction of A and B is 12. So subtraction of a and b is 12. So this is the concept of function. So again, we have a function, so void that doesn't return a value. So here I can say subtract numbers like this. I can say subtract numbers. This one doesn't return a value. We are going to have a function. So int subtract numbers that does return a value, but we need to have a return statement inside. So we need to say return zero, for example, or whatever we calculate. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about this. I'm just pointing out because we have functions with the same name, don't worry about it. So here we also have a function, so void, that doesn't return a value but takes parameters, so int a and int b, like this. And we have a function that returns a value and also takes parameters. Now don't worry about this, it's complaining because we have functions with the same name, so don't worry about that. We will, I'm just putting this here as an example. So here I can say, subtract numbers two, and here as well I can say subtract numbers actually one, two, and I can say here three, and I can say here four. So we differentiate it by their, by their name as well. So here we can say function that doesn't return a value and takes no arguments or parameters. Now I'm not gonna comment every single one of these because we are going to end this video. It's already long. I'm trying to make these videos as short as possible. But this function will return a value, takes no parameters, returns no value, takes parameters, returns a value and takes parameters, as you can see right over here. So yeah, this is the concept of functions. And the code that you put inside is your own code. So you can put whatever you want. I use subtractions and whatnot as an example, but you can put here whatever code you want that is up to you and based on the situation that you want to achieve in your game or in the program that you're programming. So yeah, this was the concept of functions and uh, I will see you guys in the next video, I guess. Nothing more. See you then.